onto ignition timing. So we've got two magnetos, one for B bank and one on A bank, although they actually do all of the exhaust plugs and then all of the inlet plugs. So B bank is exhaust mag and they do the spark plugs on the exhaust side of the cylinders. And then A bank does the inlet, which is the spark plugs on the inlet side of the cylinders. What's the point of having two magnetos? A couple of reasons. They decided that the time you get a 5.4 inch piston, and we're obviously revving up to 2,400 RPM, you can't burn the petrol efficiently across the piston face. So they needed to ignite it from both sides to get it to burn efficiently. So they will run on one, mag one magneto out of the two. And that's kind of a bit of redundancy back when the original engine, the Rolls-Royce Merlin, were up in the sky. There isn't a lay-by, you can't pull into it. You need to be able to get home again. But it does make a difference. You can tell if you're down a magneto. It is, it is noticeable. Right, so, magneto, how do we time it? Like cars with dizzies and bits and pieces, you've got points. So we've got two sets of points. Obviously, so rather than having a coil, this is a magneto, so it generates its own spark, own electricity. In fact, if I spin it, you'll, you can hear the, the points cracking. So as, that's, as the points open, it sends a spark down the rotor arm through the cap. So we need to be able to time this. So exactly, this one's eight degrees, eight degrees, four top dead center on A1. That point needs to be opening, sending the spark down to the cylinder. How do we do that? I see a lot of how not to time these online. So this is kind of a bit of an educational how to time a meteor. They're not the norm in the way you time them, really. So, introducing timing tool. This is part A. But it works as a nice stand for magnetos. One of the things when we were making it was like, why is Rolls Royce gone for this really thick bottom base plate? Like, and we're, we're Norfolk and we're agricultural, so we're a bit like, well, we can make this cheaper if we made this thinner. But we're like, nope, nope, something with the guns, so nope, if Rolls Royce has got to be like that, we'll go for that. Turns out, because the magneto is offset, if it was skinny, it wouldn't be heavy enough to hold a magneto up. So, have you got a light there, Josh? We can see some lines. On the magnetos, you've got this cast-in line. And then you have this A1 marker. For some reason, everyone likes to time their engines to this cast line here, which, has, which makes no reference to any of the timing lines you need. It's just there for a referencing point for the rotor cap. Or, if you were taking the, in, the, car, the magneto off in a field, you could line that up with that, take it off and put it back in in the right place. But, because of the vernier drive shaft, where you've got 11 teeth one end and 10 teeth the other, it's almost impossible to get it right back properly again. And then every time it comes off and on, off and on, off and on, you're ever so slightly out each time, because locating this round once, you can move, you can move this, an eighth of a slime at a time and before you know it you're you're way off so yeah because the the rotor arm has the twin you get a feeler gauge in between there and you can turn the engine over until you lined up with that line so what i'll do is i'll show you another tool that this really needs to make a new set of leads up, but we haven't done it yet, because it does work. And you, we always just want to use it. We never get a chance to maintain it. So unfortunately, this makes a racket. But you'll have to cook that in a minute. So if we come round to the, um, the timing line that everyone uses, nothing's happening. So what that's telling us is, our points aren't open and closing. They're already 
closed. Both sets of points are closed. No cylinder is firing anywhere near that line. However, if we come back to A1, it's firing here. Which, if you can see that, is bang on A1. So if I come, if you can see that, can you see the tool as well, Josh? Yep. Right, so come to A1. We've just, open points open, we've just fired. If you look, we're now past that line. So if you time, if you time to here, you're not far until you're around here. So, sorry about that noise, that is awful. But right, our next job is we need a locking plate. He goes on here. Now put this back in. But like this is a little bit of a faff. You ain't got to do it every every time. You you can use the, the top line to reference cleaning a mag. But this is the difference between ascent running and like sweet as a nut on all twelve all of the horses. It does make a difference, a big difference. So with our locking plate, Josh. You'll be fine. With our with our lock and plate on now. Right. So I'll now stick two bolts in here and lock this off. With this magneto locked off with the lock and plate, part B. And this is the same as the front flange of the magneto. The end is the same on the shaft that drives it, little quill shaft. And then it's been done up. Really done up. Didn't want that moving, did you? No, I don't. No. Right. But I can turn the shafts. This is then a copy jig. So we go over to our engine and now we'll adjust the timing on the engine to the right place. So this is timing jig on the back of the engine, which you've already seen when we did the camshafts. It's the same thing, we use the same wheel. We need to find top dead centre, which is here because the way we roll josh we're using a black pen on a black disc yeah top dead center was here we need to be eight <coughs> six seven eight holding the pen so i did the tree i'm holding the pen okay another one i want Back to get rid of the backlash. That's like eight and a half. Do you want to be on the other side? No. Nope. Nope. So only a little bit more? Yep. Half a degree. Touch more. Well. Oh. Bar out so no one can knock it. Engine's now ready in the right position. 
So the engine's now locked into position, which is eight degrees before top dead center on cylinder A6, which is the far side, A1, on the, yeah, cylinder A1. Now, Why is this pulled out here? Oh, because we've got a bit of slack to get the caps in. Right, if you could hold that cap over there. Yeah. coffee right so what we can do now insert our tool into engine but it's not going in so we just Take this. Be right over this side of that. There it is. We just slide it onto the splines. So now we do up this locking nut, or um, locking Allen key, and we go back to the workbench. So this then is set exactly the same as the engine. There is always a train here, so now there's an easy way of doing this. If in such a tight, nice fit to keep it nice and accurate, it's a little bit of a fiddle to put it together. However, we've drawn him now. Our workbench is now the same as the engine. So we can do all the fiddly bit, which you can't do because there's an engine around the other bit. Without cutting the engine in half, you can't do it. But you can now on the workbench. So, first things first, Josh.
car, isn't it? It's just a little fiddly. So the magneto now slides down with its shaft in. Um, this one spins this way. This is the normal one because it bounces back. Do it. But if they can see, Josh, them slides. Them slides in here aren't lining up. So it's just a case of lifting it up. Yeah, you can see it's not lining up. Lifting it up, drop the coil shaft out, turning it around. Nope, pulling it out. Turn it around. Nope. It's getting close. I can't see because they can see, but. That one's not. Then, <coughs> so now we know that, but that is now timed. Right, so now we remove from stand. Probably going to need your help for this. Now we just take the backlash out. See? Nope, we can't see. <coughs> it's dark. Move the camera. I'm just using the screwdriver on the gear to take the backlash out. There we go. Magneto on. The only real question left is how do you time the engine when the engine is in the tank? And in that case, you've got the big clutch on the back of the engine, and you measure the circumference of that. Um, and you can draw, you can find top dead centre and draw your degree lines, and do it that way. Because although some engines do have timing lines um, for a meteor, even then, they're not any good. The ideal timing for the engine is eight degrees for the exhaust mag and three degrees for the inlet. But um, because of the way the valve timing and stuff is also marked on the crank, they couldn't, there wasn't room to put it. If you've got a crank that's got time, um, ignition timing on, there wasn't room to put it at eight degrees. So they put it at five. And there wasn't room to put it at three degrees, so they made it TDC. And yet, you can, the ignition timing is five to eight and zero to three. The ideal is eight and three. So it's always better to time it with the mags this way than rather than even if you have got timing lines on your crank. But our next video, we're gonna get it back in the tank and we're gonna start it up for the first time and uh, we'll have the exhaust manifolds off so we can have a look what each cylinder's doing and uh, see if we've improved. And I'll explain why we're doing it in the tank and not on the stand in the next video. Righto, see you guys next time.